Are you ready for this? Mm -hmm. Okay, we've got some big news. We have moved. By the time you have watched this video, uh, we had already moved. So... <laughs> yeah, we haven't uh, posted in a while as you probably noticed, and that's because we've had just a lot going on in our life, uh, bringing you guys up to speed on everything that's happened. As she already told you, we moved. So we are no longer living in the house that we were at in Texas. We've made a big move to uh, the state of Tennessee. You guys are probably very surprised because we never shared in our in, our, in the channel our plans and desire to to move out of Texas. It is, may seem all of a sudden, but it's actually a plan that we have had since before we even got married to come and move out to this particular area of Tennessee. It's near Chattanooga. It's near the uh, Cleveland area uh, in Tennessee. So it's East Tennessee. We came from East Texas to, to East, East Tennessee. Tennessee. <laughs> we have history here in, in Tennessee. Yeah, actually, uh, it may come as a surprise to you for us to tell you that we've moved, but and, and all of a sudden, but actually, it's uh, it's been uh, our plan to move out here since before we even got married. Um, like Swan said, we have history here in this area. Both of us attended a school uh, just outside of Chattanooga uh, a number of years ago um, before we ever even met, and it was through friends in common that we met at that school that uh, she and I got into contact. Uh, so we have friends in this area, we know the area pretty well, um, and we just love it here. It's beautiful, there's, uh, there's lots of uh, hills and rocks and streams, like the, the natural beauty of the area is uh, something that's very, very attractive to me. Yeah, so when we met and we started having a relationship and I was in Brazil and he was in the US, we always talked about living in this area so, uh, if Daniel didn't come to Tennessee to study for a year, we would not never have met. And if I did not come to Tennessee, we would not met, meet. We would not meet. So, this place that brought us together, this state, is where, is where everything started for our relationship. So, we have a very deep in our heart, like I said, we cherish this place a lot because it's we came here for a vacation the other day and we stayed here for for several days and it's just like it brings up memories and good memories for him big memories for me as well about good times that we spent here with our friends in common and everything and uh besides the sweet memories it's also kind of like romantic to to see the places that we where we be and that we're everything started for us <laughs> yeah and it's also kind of an adventure to get up and you know i mean we've we've been married for over six years now and this plan has always just been on the back burner because well life happens you know and uh finances are not uh ideal for a big move like that and stuff and so just always kept getting pushed back and getting pushed back uh but finally th this year we're like that's it we got we're, we're, it. we're pulling the trigger <laughs> we gotta do it and so uh, it's been a really big adventure to, I mean, it always is when you're going to move to a different state or, you know, just a different house, even in the, within the same town, it's a big deal. Um, but this, this has been a, a huge move for us. It's, it's, it's moving out of state. It's a new house, new job, new, uh, new environment, uh, you know, new friends because it's, you know, there's, there's, sure, we know some people here, but there's a whole bunch of new people that we got to know. Uh, that we're really excited to meet, new church that we'll be attending, uh, everything is new. I, t I was joking around with one of my friends uh, when I was telling about all the changes. They said, yeah, it's like you're getting a whole new life. And I, and I was like, yeah, I feel like I'm almost going into the witness protection program because like everything is getting changed. <laughs> we also feel that we are, in, we are on vacation. Like we don't feel this is real. Like we, I don't know how to explain, but I feel like we're on vacation. Do you feel the same way that yeah, you're like on vacation? Like, so that's a good thing that you feel on vacation that I don't know why this this place in Tennessee has lots of mountains and at least in Brazil when you go to the beach it's a lot you see a lot of mountains there and so when I come here and I see a lot of mountains it just gives me this environment of the beach and I don't know how to explain So to you this is a beach town even though we're like nowhere near a yeah, beach Yeah, <laughs> we're not near to the beach just to make it clear but I just it just feels like we are 
like in a coastal, how is it coastal? coastal area. In a coastal area. So I love it, the feeling, I love it. And But of course, this is not the only reason. Maybe in, a next, in another video we can explain how was our history, how did we meet. This is not the point of the video. There are other reasons why we chose to and I don't, I don't know if you have, you want to see some, say some reasons. Uh, but I mean, Tennessee is similar to Texas in a lot of things. And that's probably one of the biggest reasons that we moved to this area. And there, there are a lot of things that we like in the state of Tennessee. Um, we also were able to um, transition smoothly because of those similarities that we have in Texas, right? Yeah, before I, before I worked as a nurse, um, I worked in residential construction. And so it's a, kind of an area that I'm very, very familiar with. And uh, I've kind of always wanted to be able to buy a house that was kind of a fixer upper, uh, be able to remodel it while living in it, and then being able to put it, you know, put it for sale, flip the house, and uh, roll those profits over into the next house, and kind of continue doing that until having the property paid off. In a lot of places around the country, in a lot of states, it's really hard to to get your foot in the door into the, into buying a house and then into that kind of business simply because the price of buying a home is so so incredibly high. You have to take out a a loan that is, you know, take you just years and years and years to pay off with huge mortgages that just takes a, a it's a really big financial burden every it, month. It's kind of funny because when I came to US for the first time, when I, when I actually married then in the very beginning of our marriage, we've talked about different states because I have family all over US, but I, I um, mostly of my, uh, most of my family are in California and Oregon and I have some family in Florida as well and we kind of talked about what about going to California what about talking to you going to Oregon and that's when then you told me like how the ridiculously uh, expensive, expensive uh, is the the house and life uh, cost living costs yeah just the cost of living and everything in some of these states um, it's, it's just way too high and so I really wanted to uh, be able to move to a state where we can afford to, to live and actually own something without being in debt for the rest of our lives. Uh, now, of course, we still took out a mortgage to be able to um, to buy the house that, that we chose here, but... Um, it's the only debt we, we will have to manage. Yes, it's the only, it's, it, that's it. And, it's, and the amount that we paid would be something that would be like, it, mm -hmm. you wouldn't be able to buy anything uh, in a state like New York or California. But there's places. another thing also, if you rent a house where we live, the amount you pay for the rent is the same amount you would pay when for, your you, for your mortgage. So it wouldn't make sense to rent a house over here where we live. So you wouldn't believe how much we pay monthly here compared to other states. It would be like laughable of how much we pay for the house over here compared to other states. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and so when I when we were both out here uh, a number of years ago, when we were going to school, um, the housing market was pretty calm here. And you know, I I, I kind of always kept my eye on um, kind of what things cost, looking around at different uh, you know realtor apps and things to kind of see what what the how the price of houses are, and it seemed very reasonable. And uh, even a, up to a couple of years ago, when we came out here, we made an attempt to move out here a couple of years ago, and for various reasons, it didn't really work out at that time. Um, but still, the, house, the price of houses was more than reasonable. It was very, very low. And this time, when we came out, when we were finally like, that's it, we're making the move. We've got to go out there. We have to find a property. We were um, prepared we were financially prepared and everything. to come here. We'd already paid off all of our other debts, so we had nothing else. So we're like, the only debt we're going to have is just our mortgage, and that's it. And so we were finally ready. And we came out here, and it's like the prices of everything has just shot up super high. Uh, well, not really super high, but well, I mean, it was just... really because of COVID after the pandemic. I don't think that would have happened if there wasn't. No... Well, no, the realtor told us that it had started going up even, even before. Even before? Yes, even oh, before. Okay. Um, now, it's still not. It's, it's high in comparison to what it was before, but still very reasonably priced, you know, as compared to other states. 
Um, yeah, but you, you can say also that everything as far as like moving and houses, it boomed everywhere across the state, uh, across the U.S., right? Because every, everywhere you go, everybody's moving everywhere in the U.S., right? Yeah, and there's, you know, certainly certain areas that are uh, booming more than others, and this is definitely one that is booming. Um, and so we found it very difficult to, to find... Uh, to find property, there's just really not that much um, inventory uh, with your as far as real estate. Um, and when you and the, what properties there are, they last only a few days on the market and then they're sold. I mean, everything is selling super fast. So we were like, wow, this is a really really competitive market right now. I don't even know if we're going to be able to to compete. Um, several people, including the realtor, had... That was even before coming here that the realtor warned us several times. He he told us, you have to be prepared to come here and be ready to make an offer really fast and have uh, some cash, even if you have some cash, uh, you may have an advantage because a lot of people come with straight cash to pay for the mortgage or whatever, and yeah, they told us uh, told us that um, when most properties that we that you go see are probably going to have several bidders, um, you know, bidding on that property already within the, within just a few days of it going out on the market, and uh, most of the time there's at least one or two cash offers uh, with that, and so we thought, man, are we even going to be able to compete in this in this market? You know, yeah. we're we're not. Uh, I mean, our uh, our credit was good, and you know we had we we had, we've had saved up money so we could have a you know money for a down payment and for closing costs and all that. And so we 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 had felt that we had prepared well for our move. But then when we came out here and we looked how everything was, we're like, wow, maybe we you know is at least four or five people wanting the same house. Yeah, maybe it's going to be too competitive. Um, it may take a while to get a house because. Um, what the uh, what several people had told us is that there's a lot of people that have come from other states where properties are much more expensive, and they uh, they sold a house or something there, or they come with the mentality of a house costs this much, and then they come here and everything costs so much less that they they're like to them offering above the market value or well above the market. Or the asking price of a property is still cheap compared to what they're used to paying, and so they, uh, many of them who had sold a house had cash that they could just come in and, and just make a cash offer on a property. And they would take seriously, more seriously, uh, those people that have cash with in their pockets. Yeah, but, just so uh, but I mean, it just made the price of everything go much higher when you have a lot of people moving into this area from other states. Where they're used to paying more and are now willing to pay more. That you know they they they've always said that the price of a property is whatever what is whatever the uh, the buyer is willing to pay. That's the actual price of a property. Yeah. And in this case, when you have a lot of people coming in that are willing to pay more, it makes the value of properties much higher. Which is great when you're the guy when you're the guy selling. But when you're in our position where you're the one buying, you want prices to be low. Yeah. Um, but definitely, that being said, uh, it's still better than other states and it's still more affordable than most of the states in the U.S. Oh yeah, it's, it's, just, it's just a, it, has, more... it just has grown so rapidly from yeah. when we were here a couple of years ago. Yeah, um, but it's, and... more, it's still more affordable than Texas. Yes. Life and co uh, uh, living costs here is also Yeah, that's a little bit cheaper, yes. It's cheaper here and uh, I mean so that was one of the reasons we came here as well, because we didn't want to go to a place that had a more expensive living cost and more uh, challenge, that it would be more difficult for us to manage a house, because this, this would be our first house. So it's, uh, our first purchase on a home, we didn't want it to be super difficult to manage. But the other reason we moved to this, air, to this place in Tennessee is because of the weather. We've talked about other places, and I personally I like the I like cold weather, but let's just let's just be uh, honest. I'm from Brazil, and it's a tropical uh, tropical weather country. We don't have snow in Brazil, so cold for me is maybe negative five degrees, not colder than that. Celsius. 
Celsius would be maybe 30 degrees Fahrenheit. That would be like cold winter in Brazil. Uh, but never 50, how many, 30 degrees below zero or nothing like that crazy. Uh, I've never experienced in my life. So when I talk today, they're like, I was very, I say, amateur. I was very um, like. Well, she told me she I wanted to go live in a place where it's like where it's like colder. Because I was. And she liked talked about snow. like up northern <laughs> United States, and I was like, you do know how cold that is? Because she at one point she she floated the idea of like Michigan, and I said Michigan. He's like, do you know how cold <laughs> it gets in Michigan? <laughs> yeah, and I always liked the snow, and obviously I think it's so pretty and everything. But living in a state that has snow for eight months or nine, like what Daniel was describing to me, after like, educating myself for a while, we came to the conclusion that we wanted to live in a weather that's more, um, not mostly snow. Yeah, and so this area of Tennessee, I would say, is a little bit cooler than Texas. Yes. It gets a little bit colder in the winter than Texas does. Um, but not crazy. But in the summer, it can get just as hot as Texas. It just doesn't stay hot quite as long. Um, I think Texas, uh, where we were at in Texas, had more days out of the year where it reached 100 or more than what it, than what it does here. Um, and in the winter, maybe it snows maybe five days, but then those days that snow, the next days are already melting. It's like it doesn't stay. The snow doesn't stay a long time. So it's like a very thin snow, like we say. Yeah, it's not real heavy. Anyways, um, back to our to our move uh, out here. We came out uh, here. We um, I took some vacation time from work, and we came out here to uh, meet with a realtor and kind of look look at properties and try to find a property that we could uh, you know that that we could uh, purchase and you know that. The realtor that we chose is uh, is a realtor out of out of Chattanooga, and he is absolutely fantastic. And we used him three years ago when we actually came here and tried to move yeah. to look for houses. Three years ago, we actually postponed by financial reasons to plan better, but he was awesome. So we used him, and he's definitely like I highly recommend him if you ever come into this area. He would dedicate entire days out of, his, out of his week to just show us one half after another, after another, after another, and just run down the list of homes that we had, uh, you know, selected out of, uh, that looked interesting to us or that he showed us from his MLS. We just drove from one property to the next, to the next, to the next, looking at different ones. And, you know, we were looking for a house that was a fixer upper. We wanted to be able to buy something that was cheaper because it needed some work. And then over the course of a couple of years, be able to fix the house up, bring up its value, and then be able to sell it. Yeah, that's kind of been our cheap, cheaper but livable. Yes, yeah, we don't, you know, it need to be something that that we could actually live in. And a couple of years ago, when we came out, there was quite a few options that fit that description. Uh, but now it looks like a lot of investors have come into this area and have bought up a lot of those types of houses. So there's now you kind of have houses that are either need a lot of work that are really not move in ready and would probably be very difficult to get a to, uh, to get a loan for or houses that are already have already been remodeled are already they're very nice homes and are outside of then outside of our uh, out of our budget and so it was very difficult to be able to have, find a house that was in the middle that needed some work so it wasn't so expensive but not so much work that it wasn't it wouldn't be considered move in ready and also there were houses that fit our description but it would have to be very fast. So you have to see, boom, you see the house, you have to go there the same day, and then by the next day you have to give an offer really quickly. So that's what we find, found out over here. Like our house, the one we bought, stayed on the market for what, three days? Yeah, and it was really, it's, it's really interesting from when, when we finally found this house. We were, it was, uh, was it Memorial Day weekend? Yeah, it was yeah. Memorial Day. It was on Monday. Memorial Day weekend. We saw and... the house on Friday and it was Memorial Day on Monday. Um, it was Friday that we saw the house. When I saw it in the app. Okay, yeah. Yeah. You saw we saw the house on the on the app. I showed. And uh, I looked at the house, and just based off the pictures that were there, I was like, "Ooh, this house has has some really nice lines." You know, there's uh, I could I could tell that this this house was 
quite a bit nicer than everything else that we've been looking at. And I was like, oh, I, I really want to go see this house. And the price was a little bit higher than, than, than some of the other houses that we'd looked at. But I was like, well, for a house like that, it might be worth paying a little bit more. And so uh, it was Memorial Day weekend. Our realtor was going to be off for the weekend. You know, he wanted to spend some time with his family. And tomorrow, on Friday, and all the way to Monday, I'm not gonna be available, so I'll only be available on Tuesday. I saw the house on Friday, and I knew the house was not gonna be on the market for very long because it was very different from other houses we were looking that didn't make sense the price and what the house looked like. And that one had a very good price for like what, what you the house pay, looked like, what yeah. you pay for it. And so uh, we thought it was, we thought about like, well, we can't get, we can't, uh, we're not gonna be able to see the house until at least Tuesday. He said that leaves the entire weekend, all of Memorial Day. And, and then, then the, the house may be gone. You know, it's like by, two, by the time Tuesday comes in, the house is gonna be off the market. It's gonna be gone. You know, like there's gonna be already, uh, there's probably gonna have offers stacked up ready for Tuesday morning when, you know, when the, when the real estate office opens again. It's like, I, I, we really need to go see that house. And so we thought about, well, what, what can we do? And so we thought, well, it's such a competitive uh, market here. We, re we really, we can't afford to wait. And so... We really wanted the house. <laughs> <laughs> well, we at least, we really wanted to go see it. Yeah. Um, and uh, so we contacted another realtor. Um, there was a realtor that was recommended to us in that same weekend in the church, when we went to the church. Well, anyway, yeah, we contacted him and he, and he said, uh, and this was on this was on, on Sunday. On Sunday. That was on Sunday. And he said, "Well, yeah, I can I can take you out there right now. In fact, in now thirty minutes. Th yeah, he's like, I can show you there in thirty minutes. I can be over there. And uh, this was on Sunday. And so we went out there and to the property, and um, you know, it was it was better than the pictures. Um, we uh, I, I love the property. I, it, it came with a little bit of extra property than some of the other. Uh, uh, then a little bit more land than some of the other properties that we'd looked at. The house had really, really nice lines to it. It had had some remodeling done to some of the parts of the house that you'd see that they had been, a, there, there was a newer portion of the house and an older portion where they'd added it. But when you looked at the house, it didn't, from the outside, it didn't look like it had had an addition. It all looked um, like it had been built that way. Uh, sometimes when you add a room to a house or something, it's kind of, sticks out and out of place. This didn't, everything flowed together really nicely and I really, really liked the house. Did you feel like you wanted to cry when you saw the house? Well, I wouldn't say cry, but I certainly got, I certainly <laughs> I like, got, got emotional very, when I saw the house. I certainly got very excited about it. Yes. And then the, the realtor uh, came with some, <laughs> I don't want to call it bad news, but uh, he told us, you know, they, um, the people who are selling the house says they're they're going to be accepting offers through the weekend and through Monday, and then on they're going to stop taking offers on Tuesday at five o'clock. Four. Or four o'clock. Yeah. You basically you have till Tuesday at at four o'clock to make an offer if you're going to want to. I'm not somebody who can just like just throw an offer out of house without studying it out, thinking about it, running all <laughs> kinds of contingencies through my mind. Um, <laughs> Like, you know, and so I thought to myself, man, is that, I, it's... it's Buying really... a house is not something you decide in five minutes. No, <laughs> it's not. <laughs> um, but um, I had to go and like, I, you know, I called my dad and told him about the house and got, you know, kind of got his, uh, his advice on that. Um, I have a, a good friend um, who's his dad. Uh, is somebody who I used to work with when I worked in construction. And he's very, very knowledgeable and you know, the construction and real estate business. And so I kind of wanted to talk to him and kind of and get his advice. And so um, we went back and I did all that. I made some phone calls and talked to them and thought about it, prayed about it. Um, didn't sleep to the, that night? Didn't sleep. And then there's the other thing too, is I'm thinking, you know, now, now we're in a bit of a problem because, well, we've been working with this other realtor for, you know, all week and even like, a couple of years ago when we came out here, we were working with him. And then, you know, just over the weekend, another realtor has now shown us the house and it's, I think it's the house that we want. And now what do I do? You know, um, 
I had to go see the house. I was, it might lose it if I didn't. But now that I have, now there's two realtors involved. Yeah, but we were clear to the second realtor just to make sure that you guys understand. We told him we have our realtor there, but we wanted to be fair with both of them. So yes, we, yeah, we, 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 we fully yeah. disclose that to, uh, to the second realtor when we talked so to him. So the first one contact us on Monday night and uh, the other realtor agent, the one that showed us the house, wanted to make an offer on Tuesday morning. So when the realtor, our realtor from the beginning called us to actually go show us the house, he was going to show us that house because remember he told us he was not going to be off the weekend. So he was going to show this house on Tuesday at 12. And so when he called uh, Daniel, then Daniel opened the game and I told him, I was like, explained everything. I told him, he's like, oh, this is like, a, it's kind of, we kind of have a difficult situation. Uh, here's what we did over the weekend. And I explained to him that, you know, um, that we really wanted to see that property. Um, and uh, we were afraid that the house We were afraid of losing out. it. And so that we went and contacted another realtor and that he'd already shown us the house and that we really like it and that we think we want to make an offer on it. But that now I don't know what to do because uh, we want to be fair to both. Uh, you know, we want to be fair to him because he spent so much time with us. Um, you know, this is like days and days. When I say a uh, when I say a day, I'm not talking about just showing us one or two properties. It is all day. Like no, by one that property time we see just this time around we saw twenty we saw twenty houses. But three years ago we saw another twenty houses. So. If you count it, it's 40 houses that he showed us total. Yeah, and then now the property that we finally want to make an offer on is one that another realtor has has shown uh, showed us uh, first. And so um, he says, well, what we can do then is, uh, since I've been the one working with you this entire time, he, says, uh, he thought, he said, I think it's only fair that I... Uh, that I close on the house with you. He says, but since this other realtor showed you the house over the weekend, what I can do is I can give him a uh, referral bonus. Like a uh, commission. Like a commission. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so, and I thought about it, I was like, well, that, that seems fair. Yeah, um, this, this realtor who's been working with us this entire time will continue to be represent us and be our realtor. And then the realtor who we contacted through the weekend and showed show us the house, he'll make a uh, a small commission for the time that he spent showing us the house on Sunday. And so they got the two realtors got together. They they talked about it and they came up with an agreement. I don't know exactly how much the commission was, but both parties were happy and it all worked out. But uh, and that was a huge uh you actually huge met, weight uh off of my shoulders. <laughs> you actually met the the realtor this weekend. This oh second. yes, because he's he's from our denomination, so I met that second realtor. I met him again. Uh, this weekend at church, and uh, he was very happy to hear that we, you know, everything had gone smoothly on the house, and that we're, you know, uh, all the way through closing. But I told the uh, the realtor that we ended up working with. We'll leave in the description down below the name of our realtor. He's a very good realtor, and actually, the first time we met him was, was because when we came here in 2018 on May, there was a very big billboard. Is that how you say it? Mm -hmm. There was a big billboard with his advertisement and his name is Nathan Waldorf. And when we saw the billboard, we was like, let's just just let's just look some houses. We were there for the for the week and like well, let's just take a look in the houses and we almost moved. Uh, we found the house because he took all the time he had and he showed us like 20 houses in one, a week or something like that. Yeah. And we ended up postponing the plans. And, and so he, he, has, he had his own business back then with only him, but his father and he has a family business. So for years and years, they are in this business of a realtor agent. So he knows very much uh, he has the know-how of the business. I told our realtor Nathan that you know it, that it's you know um, not very customary, I guess, to to go with a second realtor to show you a house and kind of add that to to kind of complicate the situation. I said, but if we hadn't done that, we probably would not be able to get the house that we were getting because 
uh, Nathan was going to show us the house on Tuesday at noon, yeah. and they were going to stop taking offers on the house at four. at four o'clock. So that means I would have from the time I first saw the house to submit my offer only four hours, and so you know I would I I know I would not be able to pull the trigger that fast uh, and make an offer, and this house probably would have just passed us up. And even then, once we admit, once we decided to make our offer, Nathan, our realtor contacted the seller's agent and found out that there was already three other offers waiting on the house. So we knew there was already a multiple offer situation. And so we're like, oh boy, this is going to be really... Uh... And we don't know if after he, he consulted and he asked the other, the listing agent, how many offers there was. And she said three offers and ours was going to be the fourth offer. But then afterwards, he didn't ask again. So we don't know. We never knew. How many more, yeah. offers total was by the end of the day? So we were thinking, well, you know, we really like this house. We really, uh, of all the houses that we've seen, after after you see 20 houses in an area, you kind of really start to get a good idea of what the market looks like in that area. And we thought, there's there's not much else in this area that looks this nice for this price. And so it's like, how, what can we do to try to get our offer accepted. So Ellen got on, on YouTube and she looked at a, at a video um, about exactly on how to make your offer uh, look more attractive to a, to a seller. And so they, give, they gave several ideas, but one that stuck out to me and I thought, hmm, that's a really good idea. They said, make, your, make, your, make a good offer on the house and then add what he, calls a, what he called a uh, escalation clause. To your offer and it says to be you know five hundred dollars or a thousand dollars above the highest bidder up to whatever limit uh, you know is the highest that you're willing to pay and so um, that way if you know if a house you know costs say a hundred thousand but you're really willing to uh, they're asking for a hundred thousand but you're really willing to pay a hundred and fifty up to a hundred and fifty and so, but you don't want to pay 150 if you could have got it for less. Uh, so what you'll you can do is say I'll offer a hundred thousand dollars, which is the asking price. It says but I'll pay a thousand dollars above the whatever bid. whatever the highest bidder is, up to 150. And maybe you might be able to get the house for 100. And with a, with the proof. Yeah. Oh yeah. With proof of that highest bidder. And so that's what we that's what we ended up doing. And uh, we thought this, we, and we made about as competitive of an offer as what we felt that we could uh, that we could put into this house. Um, you know, considering what I thought maybe I might be able to sell it for in the future. And uh, you know, I honestly, I I thought, well, this is the best that I can do. If I don't get it for this price or, or for this offer that I made, then I really need to just um, I need to just step away yeah. and, and, and continue looking. We basically maxed out whatever was pre-approved in our qualification letter. So our qualification letter had a max of X amount of, of uh, purchase. So our offer was up to that amount and we, there was no way we could make it more than that because then we'd, we would need another qualification letter. <laughs> yeah, and, and also, I mean, it's just also, also I was wanting, I was considering what could this house potentially be worth after I finish renovating, after I finish doing all of the little updates and things that I want to do to the house, you know, realistically, what could this house be worth? And so I didn't want to buy for a price that then, um, you know, got me too close to that, to that maximum value that you can get out of the house because I still needed to subtract the amount of money that I was going to put into the house, my profit, and, and everything from that maximum price. And so I needed to stay well below that. And there's some, you know, there's a few little calculations and stuff that I did on there. And I thought, well, you know, that, that maximum price that I offered was still comfortably below that. So I didn't feel that I was going to be overextending too much. To our surprise and delight, uh, we got an answer very quickly from uh, was the same day from the seller's agent. It was the same day in the evening. Um, yeah, yeah, in the evening. Nathan, our realtor, called us back and let us know that our offer had been accepted. We would call it. It could start the the process then of uh, of working towards closing. You know, going through uh, going through underwriting and 
all that sounded like so much fun at the time. Oh. Well, so we closed on the house <laughs> on June 1, exactly June 1. We were here only for a week. For our surprise, we thought we, thought we had three weeks to find a house. And uh, we thought maybe, you know, we were going to take three weeks to find and hoping that we would be enough. And even considering the possibility of being here three weeks and not find, finding anything, but for our surprise and for, like it was really a blessing that God gave us is that we were able to find this house and have, have an accepted offer in one week exactly. On May 24th, we started looking at the houses. We got an accepted offer on June 1, had closing costs and all the process of closing until July 13. So it took us a month and 13 days for us to finally close on the house. And we came here on July 12 in the evening. We arrived here in the evening, slept in a hotel, and then on July 13, we signed the papers and moved all of our stuff. On that same day, we had people from church that came help us, and we didn't have to be moving for two days. We moved everything and by 10 p.m. on July 13, we had everything in our house and we slept in our house for the first night. And so I, I think our, actually our moving uh, process and all the closing costs, I know it's a lot of stress for a lot of people, but for us particularly, I don't think it was the most stressful uh, process. We no, think. no. <laughs> I don't think it was, it was stressful enough. I wouldn't need it to be any more stressful. <laughs> no, but uh, it wasn't just, you know, finding the property uh, and, you know, making an offer, having it accepted, working through closing. I also had to find a job out here. And so during all that time, I was also doing interviews with all, basically all of the hospitals in this area. Um, you know, down in the Chattanooga area, there's a bunch of hospitals. I put in applications to all of them. I had already put applications in from before, um, and then I did interviews while I was here. And uh, as Providence would have it, the the most attractive offer that I got uh, was from the hospital that was the closest to the house that we uh, uh, that we liked, and uh, and so um, it's it ended up being the. Um, the offer, the uh, employment offer that I accepted, and uh, I now have like a 12 minute commute. It is super comfortable and I love it. Um, and I think you're very happy also because your job over here is actually paying you what you deserve. Yeah, I mean, it was a very, very attractive <laughs> yes. offer, yeah. Fair to your amount of experience, right? Yes. Um, you know, I've done several like market research um, there's di different website stuff that can where you can you know put in uh, information as far as your you know the field that you work in your level of experience and education and, and all of that uh, and they'll try to give you as, as accurately as possible a, a range of what your salary should be and uh, and now I'm comfortably in the, yeah. in, yeah, in the in the middle in the, in the of that that average range that I should be making, as opposed to always being on the on the lower end of that range yeah. like I was before, and, and and so it feels like a like a really big pay raise, which this, it is. Another thing that we expected it was different is that uh, we expected to accept a job that would pay a little less than what he was earning in Texas because we know that nurses. Uh, a lot of times nurses earn less in Tennessee than in Texas, but I think over the years a lot of things have changed over here in Tennessee with everybody coming and moving to this area and a lot of Tennessee's quickly catching up. A lot of traffic of people and uh, a lot of growth in the cities. A lot of things changed and we were not aware of those big changes. So we actually thought that his job was going to be a, the, maybe the same hourly rate that he was getting. But uh, thankfully, uh, we were wrong. And yeah. So anyway, in uh, <laughs> so I know this video is probably getting kind of long, uh, <laughs> but uh, to um, summarize, we've moved. We are now living in Tennessee, um, in the uh, uh, near Cleveland, or just just outside of Cleveland, Tennessee. And uh, we are loving it here. We love our house. We got the, we'll make a separate video and show you the house and you know some of the uh, the the nicest nicer features of the house and maybe talk about some of the plans that we have for it. Um, and then we have to show you some of the town. 
also. Yeah. But it's a really, really neat town. We've just absolutely fallen in love with Cleveland. Yeah. Yes. There's so much mm-hmm. to do in Cleveland and in the surrounding area. It's it's a. I was a little prejudiced with the Cleveland because I was wanting to go to outside of Chattanooga, but more towards actually Georgia State. That's where we thought we were gonna go to the Trenton and Wildwood area because that's where we wanted to live. But God led us in this area of Cleveland because of his career, because of the, the house and everything made it, made us believe that that's where God wants us to be. He led us here. And when we found out actually Cleveland is an amazing town. Yeah, it's, so, gro- it's growing very, very rapidly. Uh, if you're ever in the uh, Chattanooga area, come check out Cleveland. It's, uh, there's lots to do in Cleveland and in the area surrounding Cleveland. There's uh, just uh, lots of activities for, for family and for you know, just fun. Yeah, so our, my, our next videos will be actually maybe just one or two videos before we move. It's actually about... Uh, our process even, of moving. Our process is going to be only just showing... We had to start chickens because we the chicken coop was too big. It was super hard to bring the chicken coop. It would be... It's impossible. It, it, it would be impossible. Also. And also bringing the 20 chickens it would be also another really hard job. So there was a lot of... We actually thought through because I wanted to bring them. But then talking to them and then it's like there's no way because of this and because of that. There was like many reasons there was she not going to be... She wanted to bring chickens for yeah, so, <laughs> across three states. <laughs> yeah, so like it was best to sell them and we found a family that uh, they have lots of grandchildren and they only wanted the, the chickens for the eggs just like us so it wasn't gonna be for me so that's one of my fears <laughs> I wanted the chickens to be pets like really and we found a family that was gonna take care of them they knew deliver the chicken coop for them and they they were really thankful for the chickens and I, I feel in peace that they have a good home now but anyways that's gonna be the next video you're gonna just see a little bit of the process of the tour of chicken coop that Daniel made and also how he moved to the chicken coop and all the chickens that were gone that we said goodbye to them but anyways I think we can end the video now right yeah it's like 30 minutes later <laughs> okay guys so comment down below if you have any questions if you you know just if yeah, we'll, gone we'll put our we'll put the name of our realtor down in our description, yeah. so we can you know hopefully give him some free advertising because uh, he really did an outstanding job for us, and we we would love to recommend him to whoever needs a great realtor in this area. Yeah, and comment down below if you came to Tennessee as well, if you like this area, and uh, we hope to see you guys in the next video. Thank you so much for watching this video. All right, bye bye.